In this video I show you the tuning or restoration of a Craftsman block plane which is really a Stanley 9.5 type block plane. You can see some scratches on the base where I did some test cuts with the file to check the quality of the cars. The overall condition of the plane is very very fine. No part is missing, nothing is broken. But anyway, as you will see in the next parts of this video, the plane urgently needs tuning. To check the quality of the blade steel, I already did a little bit of polish, as you can see, and did some test cuts with the blade. The blade seems to be very fine and the hardness is correct. But anyway, the plane needs tuning. As you can see in this part of the video, the geometrical accuracy of the blade is very high, unusual for untuned plane blades. And as you can see with the jack with straight edge, only very little work has to be done to tune up the blade. Now let's control the geometric situation of the body of the plane and I start with the base. And as you can see with the straight edge, the base is very concave. Only two contact points but in the end and the other one close to the mouth area. And the plane is close to unusable in this condition. The cross section is also slightly concave. But this happens very often to cast the bodies. In the next part I show you the situation concerning the sides. This is the left hand side and as you can see it's concave as well. It's only got two contact points. On the right hand side you can see three or even four contact points and this needs also some improvement. Now I'm checking the squareness of the sides and as you can see the sides are far away from, from being perpendicular to the base. And in this condition, this plane cannot be used on a shooting board. On the left hand side, the situation is the same and needs improvement. working on the base. I leave the body under the tension of the lever cap and the blade during the whole tuning process. I just remove the adjustable mouth plate because I want to have a basic alignment of the base first and then tune the base blade to the correct alignment of the base. And because I have to check that the base really runs parallel to the sliding surface or to the rails where the mouth blade runs on. And when this test is done, I can file and scrap down the mouth blade flush with the base. I'm starting working with a file to take away more material. I put pressure with a file on the workpiece only at areas where I want to remove material. 
I always check that the file has full contact with the base. And I change the cutting direction frequently. show you an alternative filing approach which might be comfortable to you if you are a woodworker starting to learn working with a file and you have the chance to move the plane on the file instead of moving the file. But as you can see this procedure has a disadvantage that the file shaping, the file dust will remain on the file and you have to clean your file very often. I always cross-check the progress of my work with straight edge. Now I start working on the sides with the file clamped in the vise. And as you can see, the contact points we saw with the straight edge. And so there's so much material to be cut away. Check that the lever cap or the blade doesn't touch the vise or the file. And as you can see on the left hand side, we got now four contact points as well. Anyway, there is much more material to be removed. Once again, the right hand side. Now I show something which I refer to as a cutting image of a file. As you can see there are some spots where the file does not cut and other areas where the file really removes material. With the knowledge or a feeling of this kind of image you can cut very selectively on a specific part of your workpiece, something which is impossible to achieve with sandpaper. too much color on it, but anyway the color will be removed during the forthcoming touching stages. It is, you may regard this as a poor man's touching plate, tuning an oven plate to a highest possible accuracy, but for the purpose of tuning plates this plate is really accurate enough. Now I'm starting to scrap, I'm just using a turn's high speed steel and first start to create a kind of homogeneous scrapping image over the whole surface, which makes the interpretation of the touching image much, much easier. And with the following stages, I will start to cut out the high spots only. I change cutting direction with every pass to avoid cutting into the previous cuts. marks my way of filing. I prefer to move the file instead of the workpiece, which has several advantages but needs some practice so that you do not cut 
at the wrong areas of your workpiece. And once more I always cross check the progress of my work with straight edge and sometimes as you can see here I cross check squareness as well. Now I'm moving to a much finer file before moving over to the scrapper. Now I show you a touching image of one of the sides. As you can see, color spots on most parts of the surface, maybe at least at the end. And you can see the problem with the edge caused by the factory belt centers, which round them off heavily. Now I show you another way of scrapping with pull strokes instead of push strokes, which gives you higher control of the individual cuts. The scrapper is a recycled file forged to a kind of shape and hardened. So if you have Old files in your workshop, don't throw them away. They are a useful source material for blacksmiths or toolsmiths. As you can see now on the touching image, there are spots missing in the back part. The front and middle part are really okay, and maybe I won't get contact points at the corners or at the edge caused by the factory belts, and this is already mentioned. Now I'm doing a check on the touching plate to check the squareness in this part of the left hand side and as you can see there's a bit, a little bit light coming through so some improvement has to be done. Now I'm doing, as I already mentioned at the beginning of the video, to check if the rails or the sliding surfaces which uh, the mouth blade runs upon is really parallel to the base. With the aid of a straight edge I found a portion of the mouth blade that is straight and there I put my testing equipment on and as you can see there's a movement of only about three hundredth of a millimeter. I do not have to make any changes in the guiding surfaces or rails I can now file down the mouth plate flush with the base and tune up the base to the final accuracy. To have an idea how much material I will have to remove, I check it with a caliper. seems to be around three tenth of a millimeter uh, which has to be removed right now. I only put pressure with my left hand on the file at the area of the mouth plate because that's the only part where I want to remove the material at this stage. And once more, I change the direction of cutting very often. Even if the file scratches over the whole surface, a real cutoff only takes place where I put pressure with my finger on the workpiece. Do not hold the file at the ends because you will bend the file and as a result of this always get a convex shaped surface.
Now I'm doing a jack with straight edge again and as you can see the mouth plate is still too high, especially in the mouth area. And it's slightly convex. Now I'm doing a cross check on the touching plate. This is not really necessary, but to show you the connection between what you can see with the straight edge in a one-dimensional view and the two-dimensional image that is given by the touching plate. Now I'm changing over to the scrapper and cut more selectively. When you take a look at the shavings, you can see how much material is removed. And as you could imagine, it would take you a long time to do that with sandpaper. Regardless of the fact that you cannot cut such selectively with sandpaper. Tuning across the plane with files and scrapper is not only a matter of accuracy, it's also a matter of working speed. And as always, I cross-check the progress of my work with straight edge. And again, I always change the cutting direction with a scraper after each pass. After some passes, I always scrap over the whole surface to come back to a homogeneous scrapping image, which makes the interpretation of the touching image much easier. Again, a check on the touching plate and as you can see there are still some high spots at the mouth area, but there's really an improvement to see. So I'm doing some more heavy cuts on the mouth plate and only very light cuts on the rest of the base. And now as you can see, there's really an improvement because I now have touching points in the front area. There are some spots missing in the mouth area now, but I'm on the right way and after a few more scrapping passes, the base of the plane is finished. Now I'm checking again the squareness, and as you can see, now the plane is really square, the sides running really square to the base. We got five to six contact points on every position and really good enough for the purpose of this hand plane. same situation on the right hand side as you can see. So this plane is tuned ready to be used for high accuracy jointry.
So the most important part is the mouth area and as you can see there are lots of contact points here. Here is a spot missing but you can leave with that. You got spots in all major parts of the plane. If it would be a part of a lath or a milling machine we would need much more contact points. But for the purpose of this hand plane this is really good enough and far better than most woodworkers have ever seen. As you can see I couldn't manage to get contact points at the edge to the base but it's not such worse. But anyway, using belt sanders for cleaning up the body of a plane is really not the way how it should be done. There seem to be less contact points than in the previous part of the video. But this is due to the fact that now there is much less color on the touching plate and so the interpretation of the touching image needs practice as well. Now I'll show you the cross check with straight edge. A straight edge has an accuracy of about 0.002 millimeters and all these dark spots that you can see here have the same height within the accuracy of a straight edge. Now I'm doing a re readjustment of the mouth plate to check if the geometrical situation will change when the mouth plate is at a different position. And that's the most critical check now for this plane. And as you can see with a straight edge, the mouth plate really runs parallel with the base within the accuracy of this straight edge. And that's really the best thing that could happen. And as you can see, I achieved the same precision in the transverse direction. So because of uh, the removal of the material of the base and the sides, I have to clean up the mouth, remove the burr and make it straight again. So I do some gentle cuts with a file at the mouth. It's time to start working on the fork or the bed of the blade where the blade sits on. For this purpose I'm using a barrette file so that I can take care that the alignment of the front and the back part of the bed will improve if necessary. And I'm using the blade as a master, put some Prussian blue on it so I can touch it against the bed to see why I have to remove material. And as you can see we got some contact points in the front and the back part, but I will do some improvement of the situation. The Cutting progress is controlled via the pressure with my left hand fingers. At the moment I'm more cutting on the back part and only very lightly at the front part. And with this technique it's relatively easy to create a perfect alignment of the front or frog area and the back part of the bed.
coloring the blade a little bit and then do some more touching. at the back or in the front arrow, not in between, not to burn the blade. Now we got some contact points in the front and in the back part. Six contact points in the back part and five to six in the front part and this is really well enough for the purpose of this plane. Now it's time to do some test cuts which I show you in this part of the video. Try to create very very thin shavings as you can see sample of speech wood in this case. It's very very thin but I will check with the micrometer to measure the actual thickness. And this shaving has 0.06 millimeters. Now I'm doing some more cuts to check if there is possible to have fine shavings. Spruce to check what will what is possible here. This here measures 0.035 millimeters. So with the spline we can really achieve shavings somewhere between 0.025 and 0.035 millimeters. And that exceeds by far that can be achieved with planes that can be found in stores. Now the final step is to do a final tuning of the mouth plate 
because I want to improve the adjustability of the mouth gap. To achieve this I will remove a little bit of material at some of these casted pins of the mouth plate so that the mouth plate can move more into the direction of the frog and achieve a small mouth gap. this part of the video I show you some aspects of making a kind of washer that replaces the original adjustment lever. As you can see with the original adjustment lever the gap is too big and the purpose of the mouth plate is not really achieved. And as you can see without the adjustment lever the mouth closes properly and so I decided to make a kind of washer out of a steel disc to be able to use the full adjustability of the mouth plate. I'm doing some measurements of the cast. And of the distance of the bolt to the cast. And measuring the diameter of the bolt to calculate the position of the first of the two bores that will be drilled into the disc. checking the diameter of the nut which is also the knob so that I can have an idea which drills I will use to drill out the two holes which later will be combined with the file. I'm using my left to do a kind of mark on the disc because I can move the tool still very precisely to the position where I want to with the aid of the support to make the centering process worse easier. Checking the distance and then sand to drill the bore and do the rest on the left. doing a centering operation of the disc. I'm just the disc is only hold very lightly in the three jaw jack and I'm touching it with the tool steel to improve the center position and then I tighten the jack and actually start turning to remove material. Checking the diameter of the cast. This bore of the cast has two cylindrical surfaces, and I want to use them both for the fitting of the washer because I want to make the washer as thick as possible so that the washer doesn't bend under the pressure of the nut. To me, the left is the most important. 
formed the most versatile power tuning workshop. Routers, Vix, saws can be replaced by hand tools like planes, chisels, and hand saws, but making rotational symmetrical objects by hand is very difficult. It's time to do a first track with the actual body of the plane. Now I'm checking the inner diameter. And turn a second cylindrical surface on the disc. Checking the height of these two cylindrical parts. Remove the burr with the barrette file. Now I'm using a little trick. Due to a wrong adjustment of these three jaws on my jug. I can do an out of center bore into the disc. Now I pulled it out of the jug. Anyway, it's all done. Take a hand glove because it's very hot. And I have my two bores. Now making a slot out of these two bores with a round file. And after that, clean up the sides with a half round or a flat file. And in this slot, the nut of the mouse blade can slide in. And after that, turn the other side of the disc, so I don't have to use a new bolt, as you can see right now. It's a very simple technique, but it's very effective to adjust the mouth plate just with the aid of the nut, without any lever. As you can see now, the tuning is really well done. I can adjust the mouth plate to a very, very fine gap. So now you have a final overview of the tuned plane. I hope you liked the video and give me a like if you like. If you dislike the video, please show me another video which show the themes that are shown in this video in a more appropriate way so that I can improve myself. If you like, you can subscribe because I plan to publish much more videos concerning crafts themes in the future. Thank you for your time for watching my video.